now he's got 10-1 and can take Garen and Garen and can take Garrick down in one hit. That's beautiful. But to add insult to injury, we're also going to put down the Razor Field Rhino. The, and then, 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 the Razor Field Rhino. He also has 6-6. Six, six. So we've turned this around pretty well, and we've eliminated Garrick from the game. Because he can't block me because I'm flying, and his reach creature is tapped. Bad for him. Garrick is out. Tasty! So next on my list will probably be Cough, because I can take Gideon down one on one. I know I can with this with this deck. I can take Gideon down one on one, but Cough will be annoying one on one. Even though, if you saw my last video, Cough wasn't well. It wasn't a matter of being tough. I just let him attack me all the time. <laughs> And now he's equipping the machete on one of his dudes, so one of his dudes now has 4-3. Very nice. The Iron Guardian stirs. When you set this scheme in motion, put a 4-6 colourless golem artifact creature token onto a battlefield. Brilliant. So we get a free creature. And because he's colourless, what colourless basically means is he doesn't have a specific element about him. So if we attack someone who, let's say, was immune to all colours, this golem would be able to bypass that because he's colourless. Which is amazing. If we were going against someone with a similar deck that I had right now. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's see what we got. He can't block me with flying still. So what I'm going to do is attack him with my Magister Sphinx. My Tide Hollow Strix. My Strider? Glider. Uh, I was almost right. I'm trying to remember the names as I go along, so sorry if I do get any wrong. And I'm also going to use. Let me see. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. But we're going to stop the timer here and activate his ability so he gets flying and he can't block any of my creatures whatsoever and this is what happens 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 Cough is now down to 5 now I will suggest one thing if you are playing Arch Enemy Always try to do some damage to one person each turn if you can. The reason behind this is because there is a scheme that makes it so that uh, when that scheme is set in motion, the opponent with the lowest health total, um, yeah, yeah, it picks on the one who has the lowest health total and it lets everyone else, every well, everyone else, uh, 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 all your other opponents have the same life total as him. So let's say I pulled that scheme next, and I affected Cough. Um, Cough has 5 health at the moment, Gideon has 20. So Gideon's health would be brought down to 5, just because of that scheme, which is friggin' awesome. And Cough put down another Earth Elemental. Bloody typical. Dick. And we just had to use that as well. Oh god, this might hurt. Or not, he's not gonna attack me. Okay. So Let's see what we can do this time. Oh wow, we get another Iron Guardian. Another 4-6 colourless Guardian on the field. Very nice. Don't I have enough? Oh, he needs light. I only have one light in my deck. At least I think I do. Okay, I'm just going to wipe out Cough with my Magistrate Sphinx. As for... I'll deal with... Gideon, just to make sure that he does die, actually. I'll set those out and that out, just in case he does have anything secret planned. I'm going to stop the timer quickly, give him his ability so he can fly. And let's see what happens here. He, uh, this might actually be overkill. Yeah, it is. But it makes sure he's dead. Just make it sure you're dead, Cough. Make it sure you're dead. And Cough is dead with minus six. Now this is going to be simple. I can take Gideon on one-on-one -on -one easy now with my hand, my deck, and everything. 
So bring it on, Giddy. Bring it on, Giddy. So his core duelist is equipped. It has double strike. I'm gonna get rid of him now. Using Stoic Rebutal. Which costs one less if you control three or more artifacts. And it counters target spell. Which also can be used on monsters. Because technically, summoning a monster is a spell. Who to funk it? So, denied. Sit back down. But you put out the core hook master who makes it so that when it's put onto a battlefield, she targets a creature and that creature becomes tapped. But she's only gone and wasted it because my Magister Sphinx is tapped already. Great. But it doesn't untap. Which is gay. Embrace my diabolical vision. I love the name of these schemes. When you set this scheme in motion, each player shuffles his or her library and graveyard into his or her library. You draw seven cards, then each other player draws four cards. Ooh, this will be interesting. So my graveyard's gone, it's in my library now, and I get a full new hand. Sadly, I've lost my gargoyle, but I do get that, that one light that I was looking to. Let's see what we can use. We've got another golem's heart. What? Let me just double check. Shape anew. Control on a target artifact sacrifices it. Reveals a card from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals an artifact card. That player puts that card on the battlefield and shuffles it all over the extra business way in his or her library. I'm going to use this on you. And look at that. I only went and pulled out the razor field fresher. Fresh. And look now, I can use Dead Reckoning. You may put a target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. If you do, Dead Reckoning deals damage equal to that card's power to target creature. Taken. I'm doing that. Now, equal to that is, I do believe, the Elite Vanguard. So, if we target the Elite Vanguard... The Elite Vanguard is dead! And you'll notice that the stats of Glory Seeker went down. That's because one of the pieces of equipment that is on her, if if I can get it, if I can get it, if I can get it, yeah, no, I can't get it. But the piece of equipment that she is wearing, that obviously gives her more stats depending on how many creatures they control, I got rid of one, thus, yeah, pretty self explanatory there to be honest. There you go, put that one down, I can put that one down for free. And I can put that one down for free. And brilliant. And I can pretty much do every anything I want against Gideon right now, which I am going to do. So, attack, 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 attack. I'm just going to attack with everything and see what happens. Gideon might have something up his sleeve, but we will see what happens. Ad attack my creatures. Let's see what happens. Blocks two of them. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, that was interesting. Four. Four. Two, so it's down to ten. Another two, so it's eight. Another two, so it's six. Ooh. Another two. Ah, oh, he's down to four. Sad face. But he only has his um, one monster around the field with two equipments, so he could just equip that one person. Stoneforge Mystic. Bullcrap. Because now he gets another equipment card into his hand. It just happens to be Kite Sail, which is gay. Core Outfitter. When Core outfield, outfit enters the battlefield, you may attach target equipment you control to target creature you control, which is gay. Because <laughs> now look what he's going to do. It's attached to someone now, and he has a creature with 5-5. Five, five. But he's not going to attack me, because I still have more stuff than he does. Winning. Another scheme to put in motion here. My genius knows no bounds. 
Set this game in motion, you may pay X. If you do, you gain X life and draw X cards. Let's do this. I'm going to... I will. And I'm going to sacrifice three. And I get three cards. One is which is a land. So that was good. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to... An epic creature. Every deck has an epic creature somewhere. And this is Tezzeret, the Dark Steel Colossus. The Dark Steel Colossus has Trample, is indestructible, and if the Dark Steel Colossus would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal the Dark Steel Colossus and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. Basically, does not die machine. Absolutely wonderful. Gonna put you down there, we're gonna put you down there. Sadly, we we will not be seeing the golem. This this uh, this game because we are about to kick Garen right across the face with everything we have available. Absolutely, because you got to do it. It's too bad it's not like H C Bailey. If it was like H C Bailey, I reckon H C Bailey would have hacked it in such a way so that. With all these creatures combined, we'll do like 6,000 damage! Or something like that. So let's see how much we do end up doing to Gideon. Because this is his final round. He can't, he can't win now. Let's see what happens. 4. He's dead. 5. Minus 5. Minus 11. Minus 13. Minus 15. Minus 19. Minus 21. Ooh, that's harsh. I lose my creature. And I lose another one of my creatures. But minus 23. And we are the win ours. Oh yes. 3 on 1 and they still couldn't beat me. And I had 53 HP at the end of that. Get in. And did I get a card? I did indeed. The Psychosis Crawler. Psychosis Crawler's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. This is going to be a fantastic addition to the deck. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this game of Arch Enemy. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. And as well, in the comment section below, let me know. Do you want me to take on Garruk? Do you want me to take on Tezzeret? Do you want me to take on... Well, Garruk or Tezzeret in the Arch Enemy campaign? Or do you want me to take on... Tezzeret, Ajani and Ral? Or just Ral Zalek? Ladies and gentlemen, let your voices be heard. Let me know in the comment section below. Goodbye fellow gamers, goodbye, and I'll see you guys at the gathering.